My name is Elena Manzardini. I am the graduate program chair at SAIARC and we are here in our gallery where you can see 12 of the best uh, projects that have been selected for this show. We like to call this the League of Gary because here we have the thesis prize of Gary that are being given every year to the best students in, uh, in the school and also a selection of the uh, best thesis students and the best students that somehow we think will carry on um, a tradition of the school of being groundbreaking in their thoughts about architecture and somehow their projects seem to be a beginning of what future in architecture could be. It's clear that technology and the creativity of technology enter back the realm of research of SciArc. Not that ever left, but I think this year was interesting to see the selection of the Gary Prize, where this special moment where architecture owns uh, the three-dimensional models of the city, uh, the physical location and those canvases, the art buildings, can actually become a place of imagination and our phones and personal devices are a way for us to look through them and to look at architecture. So it's a moment where architects have this um, set of tools in terms of technology and sort of knowledge about uh, analog reality and those theses somehow try to put them together in a creative way. We decided to make a game uh, for engaging this new discussion in the architecture panorama between digital and physical space. If we take in consideration architecture and the city itself, right now physical values and digital values are merging always more. We tried with Games of Deletion to frame a discussion and to find the use of augmented reality in particular as designer. So we kind of appropriate of tools that are usually not ours, that are more related to a software engineer industry. And we try to blend them into architecture for creating a sort of system and a framework that can replicate himself and be effective in the future. We start to look at the city of Los Angeles and people's experience um, intersecting with those murals and uh, the augmentation content. It's actually cutting through the physical and the digital. So this digital value is very, it's like a new dimension for architects to create. It's a sort of interface for explaining that in a city of the future, it becomes much more decentralized, the system, and personalized for users and citizens are more become a sort of users that interact with the city before let's say physical and digital at the same moment ar is already a medium cutting through the physical and digital then all those digital volumes and digital behaviors and data can actually be helpful for the design of the redevelopment or the development of the city My thesis work is about singularity and multiplicity. I think it's a profound question because normally for traditional Western novel, it's always focused on a single protagonist. It's the parallel with architecture that is always tend to associate it with a single object. But I think uh, for architecture, like there are so many people different genders, people from different places will use them and see them, feel them. So uh, you cannot just make one thing and satisfy everybody. So I just trying to create this kind of multiplicity. I have started my exploration from a, a traditional Chinese novel. The name is Red Dream Mansion and the Chinese name is Hong Long Meng. So I took this imaginary plan of the novel because in that novel the author described the layout of the village in a great detail so I could draw some element from it so I made this plan and flip it over uh, as a section so some of the buildings and landscapes and also courtyards becomes the elements or objects on the building. This year what we did is that we, we tried to use a format or a medium in which the students could test idea and that medium is the book. It's a medium that helps them edit down their work. This is at SciArc, it's not only the drawings, the models, the animations that we put up in the walls, but also the content and the work. This is the, the graduating class of 2018, and they have uh, certain ideas, they have certain interests, and then you can see it even in the format of the books. So the books uh, catalog 
ideas, each one of these pamphlets or folders are setting up small groups of ideas. Nicole Lee, for example, she's interested in material processes, she's interested in form and material, and all that appears in those books. Other books like Jose Carlos Garcia, it's very well edited, it's perfectly organized, it's curated, it bounds the work in a very kind of unique way as well. In most of the projects, actually, there was an understanding that buildings have a role in the shaping of our culture, and whether or not we understand them as being the driver of the design, they do have an effect. Um, there is a lasting effect on the society. One in particular, I think, is Andrea Cadioli. He worked on the American power boxes. He rethought the idea of the American embassy in the world, trying to find a prototype that, departing from the idea of the cube, would be able to be used everywhere, and the weak ontology of the, of the people would somehow adopt a specific platonic shape and an ideology which is American ideology into different countries. Clearly a very difficult territory. So students felt challenged and empowered enough to actually think about the relationship between political view and the role of architecture in that, in that jump between one site and another. So my thesis is called American Power Box. The thesis explores the potential of ontological weakness in the architectural expression of power. My proposal is to look at a prototype, which is a simple box, while creating a system that takes this object and deploys it in different posture relative to the ground according to the relation of the American government with the embassy hosting country to create multiple ways of approaching the object and also proceeding it. And then the building itself creates three different grounds for three different relations with the hosting country but also three different synthetic ground inside the building so that the relation of what is the hosting country, what is the American country, and what is the entity of US can start being blended and, and operate in a different way. Another of our projects, which is called Club Fabulan from Eleonora Orlandi, the book displays plates, you know, almost as if the book is set up as just a series of drawings. It's not bounded in a way that it engages as a traditional book. And then the projects, they, they play along. So you could see that there are ideas on the wall and there are ideas on the book and the, the book format and the book writing that really try to uncover new territory. My thesis is a performance building. It's a new way of approaching architecture and performance at the same time. And this space is, is divided into four areas of interest that deals with engagement and immersion, theatricality and gesture, floating and atmospheres, and uh, catharsis and individuality. So all of the shapes are related to how the user feels the space in that moment, depending also on the kind of performance they are experiencing. So there's two contemporary issues that I'd like my project to speak to. One is the role of myth in contemporary culture, and the other one is our role as human beings in the Anthropocene. One of the things that my project is trying to bring up is the manipulation of nature. I'm using design in order to see if I can get architecture to express something which I think architecture has lost its ability to express, which is myth. What I've maintained is that architecture can engage with myth just by creating a type of myth feeling or myth affect. So another example of the book's um, range or scale or size is that we have uh, Spencer Daly. And, um, his project really questions the role of the architect or the role of the designer. His earlier book really catalogs a lot of images of how you can stage the role of the architect rather than drawing, rather than text. Photography is the medium by which you can question what is to be a designer today. Conceptually, there are lots of games being played in this large tableau and photo and image and where those meet with architecture. I think just the fact of it being an image is important to me. I think image is wrapped up in identity right now. My thesis tries to bridge a little bit of the image culture and how it might relate to contemporary architecture, representationally, um, maybe in the way that you can actually produce architecture. Kind of the most surprising element of this project and the most interesting is that I constructed this whole scene of people producing 
a set, and that was documented in an image. It's sort of this removed story in a story in a story of saying that the images that we look at today in architecture on our screens, do they have to be complete buildings? Do they have to happen after a building is built? Does an image just become some sort of uh, index of something that already exists? But now we create things through images. We create identity through images, and I think we can create architecture through images. You're constructing a world. Another project is the work of Abigail Warners. She started in this prep by looking at the world, uh, creating an atlas of the world. Her final thesis moved to LA and how you can start to see that world of architecture that goes beyond the traditional atlas. The projects, they, they find in the books a way to, to discover, to discover examples of architecture, to discover new ideas. There's not a one unique thing that they're looking for. They have more questions than what they have answers. Students become architects. It's almost transformative, the, the, the problem of thesis.